Hello folks, welcome back. It is a ranty video today, but not a negative one, so to speak. It is going to be, in my opinion, quite a nice video in where we're going to talk about should you ever feel shame about being into Warhammer as a whole. It is something that I've seen on YouTube quite a lot over the last few weeks, people discussing this topic. So I thought I'd wade in with a few of my observations and a few of the things I've discovered in the hobby over the years. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below and all that, but I don't want to go on all day. I don't want this to be a super long video, so let's jump right into it, shall we? So, let's have a little discussion. Do you remember when you were in school or college or university or whatever? Maybe even after school, I don't know, after college, after you're out, after, when you're an adult. That one time you were sitting around a group of friends who are normies, right? These friends that you've got are normal. They're not into any geeky stuff. Or if they are, it's very mild. You know the type, you know? Average, nice people. If you're older, they've got jobs. They sit there making small talk. And maybe there is one person in the group that you, you actually think is kind of cute, you know? That you might want to go out with or you might want to approach. Then you think to yourself, I am the odd one out here. If only they knew the stuff I actually like. I wonder what they would say when they found out I can name all 18 Primarchs. Then your mind races as you think of all the ridicule you would get from them. The snide remarks. The sneers. It's not a nice feeling to say the least. And we've all had it. That feeling is what this video is about. Should you ever feel shame for being into Warhammer? Let me take a little quick sip of tea here. Alrighty, for me, that comes in different levels. Unlike other people who've discussed this topic, where they generally tell you, no, you should never feel shame for it, it's your thing, you know, you should always be living in, in a happy world full of sunshine and rainbows, I don't agree. Because they're different levels. Let's take our medicine first. You and me together, we'll take our medicine. There are some instances where shame in regards to this hobby is applicable. And let's look at them, shall we? I picked three out. I think most of the other parts of shame, you can sort of worm your way in here underneath these umbrella terms. The first time when you can actually feel shame and it's completely healthy is if you're spending more money than you should on Warhammer. We all know one guy, right? Maybe it's you. I once worked at Games Workshop with another staffer in our store and he spent so much on models that he couldn't afford to pay his rent. I shit you not. Some people start working with GW, right? And they get that sweet, sweet 50% discount and they start buying stuff. Left, right and centre. They just go mental. And of course, your manager's going to let you buy stuff from the store, you know? He sees you coming. You're a mug, right? Just remember, you're working for the company and then you give them your paycheck back to get plastic. That's worthless to them. You know? I didn't buy anything for my first six months at Games Workshop. Hardly anything at all. Maybe maybe a, a box here or, or, or a, you know something else there. But I never got any armies, never got anything like that for a good six months. Until finally I'd saved up a little bit and I was like, oh, do you know what? Okay, I'll, I'll buy a little bit here, a little bit there. And as somebody who works at Games Workshop, you kind of need to do the hobby to remain, you know, a cognizant of what's going on, you know? But I shit you not, this guy spent his rent. Every penny he had of his first paycheck went to Warhammer. He then spent a frantic few evenings driving around in his beat-up Ford Mondeo to people's houses to see if they would buy his models from him on the cheap. And here's the tragic thing. He asked all of the people there, all the customers that he approached, not to tell me or the manager. And of course, one dickhead in that group ended up texting me, saying it was really funny that this guy turned up trying to pawn off his scaven to him when he had no money left, right? I gave that guy short shrift, because that is a horrible thing to do to another human being who is quite desperate at that moment. But this is a ridiculous situation to get yourself into. You have lost a lot of money in terms of the value of the models because you are in a desperate situation. People will take, will take advantage. And when I talk to my co-worker about this, 
and I got to the bottom of how much he got for his models, he got around 25% of what the models were worth on the shelf in terms of price. Just enough to cover his rent, but nothing else. No food, no, no nothing, right? The guy had to go back to his mum and get a couple of hundred quid from her so he could live on pot noodles for the rest of the month. That sound like fun to you? No. We all went out for drinks, we all went out for meals, and he couldn't go. He was kind of ostracised for a bit because he didn't have anything. He had, he had no way of getting out with us and paying his own way and having some fun. He just had no way of doing it. He ruined his life for a couple of months for the sake of models that he didn't even get to play with or build. The shame here is a lesson and an important one that needs to be learned, and he did learn it. He did learn it. Never ever put your hobby above your real life commitments. It sucks, I know. We all want to get the models we like and the things that we like, but the thing is, we are all in the same boat. Warhammer is a luxury we reward ourselves with for a job well done. It's not the job in and of itself, even if you work for Games Workshop. It isn't, all right? It is an accessory to your life. It's not your life. There needs to be a healthy separation between you and Warhammer. It's something you do because you like it. It's not something that, you know, takes over and becomes a job to you. That's the first time when shame is applicable, where it should come around, and you should feel it, and you should use it to spur you to not be such an idiot next time around. The second is when the hobby is starting to poison other parts of you. You know what I mean? The competitiveness, the constant issues of comparing yourself to others that leads to misery and not taking pride in your own work. We all do this to some extent. We do. We all do this to some extent. We all know that we do as well. I do it. I do it on Instagram all the time. I'm flicking through and I'm seeing, you know, a model or, or, or a, um, a, a colour scheme that really works. I'm really happy with it. And I'm like, oh my god, I wish I could do that. I wish I came up with that idea. And before you know it, you're going down a rabbit hole of looking at your own models and not liking them. And that's when you start making changes to your models that aren't needed. Because you liked them half an hour ago, why don't you still like them? You know? The competitiveness, the constant issues of comparing yourself to others that leads to misery and not taking pride in your own work. The shame, again, is the lesson here. Don't run away from that feeling as it is necessary and the next time you seek to compare yourself to a golden demon level painter or some douchebag on Instagram who owns a £300 airbrush you can't afford, you will remember the feeling that you had now, that shame. And ultimately, that toxic comparisons are worthless to you. In fact, they are less than worthless. They are a net negative and are harmful to both you and your hobby time. Shame is very, very, very good to have there. Alright? It's good to have. Being completely honest. You sit there and you go, do you know what? This ain't right. Why am I feeling this way? Right? I, I, I should be ashamed of myself for comparing myself to these idiots. No. As long as my models look good, I can move on. That's how you should use your shame. And the last bit of legitimate shame I want to talk about is social time. Probably the most fundamental part of why you feel shame doing the hobby. This is applicable to everybody. All right, another sip of tea coming, so I've got a sore throat. All right. When it comes to it, your social time is bloody important. The minute being into collecting and painting plastic army men or playing with them becomes more important to you than seeing your friends or interacting with other humans in a social setting is the minute you need to get outside and touch some grass. That feeling of shame that comes with it is necessary to poke you out of the slump and get you out and about. I did this just the other week. I'm sitting in my front room with the curtains drawn because it makes for better light from my hobby lamp, right? And I'm painting my models, putting together some models. It's Friday afternoon. I've got the afternoon off. And I just think, what am I doing? 
after two hours of that, when I got I got some work done, I got some, you know, some hobby work done. I thought, what am I doing? My missus is in town having a few drinks with her friends and, and my friends too. I was like, do you know what? Sod this. So I put my models away, I went and got a shower, I got myself ready, and I went out and I had drinks with my friends and I had a really good time. And I came back the next day, my models were still there, and I carried on the evening with where I left off. Because I felt shame. You know? I felt shame. I felt like I was sitting there, like, not knowing what to do. I was like, I shouldn't be doing this right now. A lot of you would have pushed through that shame and felt even worse and would have stopped enjoying your hobby time. Because you're not listening to the shame. And you should. I know there will be people in the comments and in other places online who are proud to be sitting there on their own because they think life is too hard. Do not listen to those people. Those people are fucking crabs. Just because you... you know, just as you try to climb out of the bucket, they try to drag you back down into it. It's the same energy as the friend of yours who makes fun of you for failing when you talk to a woman in a bar, but then doesn't have the fucking balls to approach anybody himself. Alright? Failure loves nothing more than company. They are social black holes, sapping your energy, saying, you know what? Don't bother trying. Sit here in the, in the darkness with me, and we can cuss the world out for not giving us what we want with no effort put in whatsoever, without them ever wanting to actually try and change things themselves. It is important to say this, because I know there will be people arguing that it's okay to sit on your own all day with your Warhammer every single day. And I'm here to tell you, son, it's fucking not. Put your big boy pants on, get out there, and talk some shit. And if you're single, get out there and talk some shit to some women. Jesus. The hobby should accentuate your life. It should be a big, beautiful, healthy part of your life. It shouldn't be the defining factor. And the minute that you're spending valuable social time away from your friends as a recluse with your little army men, you need to start feeling that shame and listening to it. Alright? Alright. So the heavy shit is kind of out the way. Okay, you can come out from behind your sofas. I've stopped tearing into you, right? Let's go into the reasons you shouldn't feel shame when it comes to your hobby. And the most important, and likely the only one that I need to make, is that it makes you happy. Okay? Try to never feel shame for something that makes you happy. Especially if you're already taking the advice that I've already put on this video. If you're living a, a normal, healthy lifestyle, right? You're going on runs. You're going to see your friends. You're going and doing things. And there's one afternoon where you want to say, Do you know what? I want to just build and paint some models. Do not feel guilty for taking that time out for yourself. Especially if it's a stress release after a long day doing other things. Make sure you're using the hobby for what it's supposed to be used for. You're sitting down after a happy, long day of either socialising, working, or doing what you want. Even if it's during the day, you know what I mean? All of our lives are different when we get our time off. You sit down and you want to do your hobby. Don't let the shame go too far. It's a very useful tool to know when it's time to put the models down. But if you know you've worked hard, if you know that you're doing well, if you know that you've had social time and that all of your other needs are met and it's time for your hobby, don't listen to the fucking shame that's going on in your head. Tell it to piss off and leave you alone for two or three hours, maybe four, so you can get some hobby done. There's one really cool thing that I've written about quite a lot in, in, uh, in uh, essays and, and things like that to, to different people. Um, actually, if you look at the, the Durham University website, if you, go, if you go into their library, there is, is an essay on stress that I wrote that they took, and it's actually in their academic library. So if you go and look it up, you can do. Um, I don't, it's not under Northern Exile, though. But if you ask me about it on Discord, I'll give you my real name, and you can go and find it, all right? Just ask me about it, and, and I'll, I'll show you. But anyway, it's about stress and relieving stress. And in university, I used painting Warhammer as a definite way to relieve my stress. I would get into what I describe as a sort of, of of zen tranquility when it came to doing one thing in particular, and that's painting eyes. I don't know why, 
but painting the eye lenses of my space marines and the eyes of my you know special characters really put me in some sort of a headspace where, where my head emptied it emptied of everything the stress the 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 rigmarole of university life relationships worries all of those things melted away as i focused on this one super super niche problem painting this eye correctly it required all of my concentration and all of my mental power for that one minute and my brain emptied and every single time i painted my models even if it wasn't to that extent of a zen moment i would get a similar feeling and i come away from painting my models refreshed happy and ready to go again right it became a thing i used to do in the morning before lectures i got into it i'd get up in the morning make myself some breakfast and a cup of tea then i'd start painting my models in the two or three hours that i had before i had to go to my lectures i'd paint my models and i end up going into my lectures clear-headed and able to actually focus on what the lecturer was telling me and my grades went up all right i was on for a two two maybe even a third which is not good in my degree until i started this process of using the hobby to accentuate my my brain and make sure that i'm calm and i'm ready to receive information painting did that for me and i ended up going up in grades and i ended up getting a two one almost a first i i, I got a 69 <laughs> uh, and you needed a 70 to get a first i was really annoyed but anyway um that's where we were and, and so it really did help me so make sure that you're using the hobby too to get into that zen headspace it is a reason why you shouldn't feel guilty about your hobby time do you know what i mean it is definitely one of those times next using the hobby as social time okay painting and gaming with others is essential to the hobby experience we all know it we all go to events we go out of our way to play games against other adults rolling our dice and having fun it is absolutely essential for us to do that to make sure that we're getting our face time with others who are like us all right surround yourself with good people in the hobby if you do that you will never want for friends and you will never want for stress release use the hobby to get your social time it is a cheat that you can do Instead of going out and having to have fun with your friends in a bar or something, maybe you don't want to. Well, why don't you get friends in the hobby, talk to other people in the hobby, and get your social experience that way while still painting and building your models. There are, way around, there are ways around um, that, that shame feeling, you know what I mean? Of not getting your social time because you're in the hobby all the time. Well, mix the two together. Make sure you're going to gaming events. Make sure you're going to a place like a store where you can sit down and have communal painting sessions. Those are amazing for me. Some of my best memories of working with GW and the hobby as a whole is actually sitting there with fellow hobbyists and just talking, shooting the shit, whilst we're putting paint on our models. It is a brilliant experience. And it is something that I will always cherish in my, my, in my mind. That I got paid to do that. Didn't get paid very much, but I still got paid to do that, right? It was an awesome thing. And I was doing my hobby whilst I was having my social time, whilst I was getting paid. If you're in a place where you can actually afford to get paid very little, then go and work for Games Workshop, Then, because, you know, you're going to have fun. You know, if you get a good manager anyway. The next one is using the hobby to explore your creative side. This is huge. At least it was for me. It was absolutely integral to me. I've seen this hobby make people into competent writers who never once dreamed of writing anything as they saw it as cringe or just too difficult. And that says nothing for the artists, animators and others who made their entire careers from their work around the hobby. Make sure that you're using the hobby to accentuate your creative side, to get it out of your chest, to get it out of your brain, that story you've been turning over for ages, just write it, all right? If you've got a cool story about your Space Marine chapter or your craft world or something else in the hobby, just put it to paper. If you're an animator and you've always wanted to work with it, do something. Make sure you don't charge for it, right? So you don't get sued. 
but make sure that you do something to get yourself noticed. Those are all incredibly, incredibly good ways to use the hobby to, to absolutely um, broaden your life, to make things more, shall I say, hmm, amenable to happiness, to create more room in your, in your life for happiness. Those are the ways to not feel shame in the hobby. In the end, though, it is up to you where you draw the line when it comes to your own shame in doing Warhammer. As I've said, the shame you feel for doing the hobby can be completely healthy and normal. I push to head outside and do something else for a while, you know? In relationships too, I've often said, look, if you meet a woman and she doesn't recognize that, you know, you doing the hobby is a healthy thing, don't be with that person. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Especially, especially, being completely honest here, guys, especially if you're the kind of person who's doing the hobby and it actually is good for you. If you're doing it and it's good for you and you're doing it in a healthy way, as we've discussed earlier in this video, and, and it's a, a, another, another facet to your life, it's another jewel in the crown of your life, and then somebody comes in to your life and says, don't do that, it's cringe. No, mate, you're fucking cringe. Get out, right? Now, now the, 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 the wood for the trees argument there is finding out whether people actually have your best interests at heart. Because you may be like my co-worker. You may be somebody whose hobby is taking over his life in a toxic, bad way. And so then you need a friend or a girlfriend or a partner or a family member to come in and say, this ain't healthy, sort your shit out. But as an adult listening to this video as you should be right you need to decide for yourself where that line is drawn to find your own happiness and to be healthy and to provide for your family and your friends and to go out and make sure you get social time make sure you're working on yourself in other ways right if you're giving more attention to your space marines than you are to your own body that's not healthy goes for the mind as well okay in reality, though, if part of a healthy and balanced life, the hobby is indispensable to having and living a happy life as a nerd who likes Warhammer. It is an incredibly important force for good in your world. Just make sure it doesn't become the world itself. One last point I'd like to leave you on. The scaffolding is nice when it helps you hold your house up. But if you use it as an actual house, it provides very little shelter. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Use the hobby as a scaffold around your life. It adds to it. It, it. it holds things up for you. It takes mental strain from you. It takes stress from you. It gives you nice memories. Use it like that. Your life is a house. The hobby and all the things you like are the scaffolding around the house. The reason so many people fail in this thought process in their, their work-life hobby balance is that their hobby, especially if they're unemployed, their hobby becomes their life. Their house becomes the scaffolding. And whilst it does provide you with some little shelter, it's not good. You really need a house. Alright? So that's my video on shame in the hobby and feeling shame for being into the hobby. What do you think? What are other parameters in the hobby where you think that you feel shame when it's justified? Or perhaps when it's not justified? Have you ever had that moment where you look around your friend group and you think, my god, I don't really belong here. I'm into Warhammer. You know? And you get that feeling of social shame. Have you ever had that? Let me know in the comment section down below. I love you all a long time. I will speak to you tomorrow for some more hobby nightmares. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'll see you then. Have a good one.